This motto is Oak Hill Model Track Supplies, where we I actually built 12 feet of roads on it using that cement. And that's that uh, diorama and that segment's going to run in the October What's Neat show. That but the footage of that uh, came out really good. It was very nice. I know, this is where I edit it and cut it off right there and go back. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, I'm losing it here. That's all right. We're going to just edit this right out. That's okay. <laughs> This is the What's Neat This Week podcast for August 26, 2017. Tonight we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Tonight I've got Brad George with me. I've got Thomas Heil, Dirk Reynolds behind the camera. Hello, Dirk. And of course, our favorite Daniel Coombs with us this evening. Now, Chris Palomare is just getting off vacation, was unable to be here this evening, but he will be with us next week for next week's show, so look forward to that. we got so much different stuff to talk about this week. I don't even know where to start, guys. Um, Thomas, what have you guys been working on in your, on your layout this week? Not too much. The last couple of weeks have been pretty much focused with work. Um, the last time where we left off on the podcast, it's kind of summarizing things where we're laying up, going down. Haven't made too much work on that. We've been kind of been going through the joys of living life, paying the bills, and making the money we can so we can keep building that. Um, friend Brad here, he just got himself a, a nice, uh, inloaded a nice uh, little bit of change on a nice Amtrak set. Yeah, I sure got. did. <laughs> Who makes this model? That is a Rapido, and uh, I got I bought one, and I liked it so much I bought another one, and then I bought ten Wallers. And he's got sound in them, right? Yep. The good work, Jason over there at Rapido Trains. He just keeps coming out with. I saw he had the uh, baggage car door, the cabbage. The cabbage. Yeah. yeah. In they fact, make the if you've too. seen his website, did you see the cabbage video? Yeah, Jason, I'm telling you what, sir, you've got some of the most amazing videos out there on the market. <laughs> uh, a little eccentric, let's just say, but there was a little bit of vegetables involved in making your video. I, I laughed all the way through it. This week we had Ron Pear in the studio. He came by on Monday and Tuesday, was it, Dirk? Yes. And we filmed him. Uh, he, he was a very exceptional modeler, and he was very level-headed and astute fellow. What did you think of the whole situation, Dirk? Because you helped us film it. I shot most of it, uh, watched him build. His model was uh, incredible. I've never seen that thickness of a model. Uh, the material that it was made out of being a, kind of a cardboard, uh, but very sturdy, very, very good. He mixed paints. He really did an excellent job on the painting. And it shows when you go outside and you see the picture that Ken shot with that building. So It was pretty amazing. Nick Massey owns this company. It's called ITLA Scale Models. We built this uh, kit. This is a brand new kit. In fact, York Industries is the one I've got here. And the other building that we built for the show is this Olympia Tool and Die Company. And this, in fact, is the model that Ron Pear built for us. And Very it took cool. him two hours to put this together. And it was a pretty amazing segment. It's 17 minutes for November's What's Neat, the uh, What's Neat show at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. So I'm lo really looking that's, forward to. That's uh, just amazing the amount yeah, of the that amount was of. Very cool. They say because that's all laser cut material, and that's not some you know that's some pretty thick material. The fact that you know the technology has gotten so advanced that they can make such fine detail cuts into that material and come out with such a nice product is. Is, is just flat out amazing. If you really want to get into the mind of Nick Masney, the owner of the company, you've got to look at this one piece right here. He didn't just take a doll rod and put it in the package, but he actually took the doll rod and cut out a groove into the, <laughs> in order to package it. I mean, there's somebody who really thinks, and if they think that much about packaging, that's how much more thought went into the design. So I'm looking forward to working with them. I checked out their website, the ITLA Scale Models website. They've got a really a lot, an assortment of buildings. I want to say um, maybe there's 12 or 14 buildings on there, 18 buildings. The train station is the one I've got the most interest in right now. I'd like to build that for a segment of What's Neat, so we're going to be uh, picking up one of those from him and working on neat. that. That'll be neat. I, I know, I know. Tell us, what have you been working on this week, Daniel? Um, well, I kind of decided to look at my layout. I'm seeing some of my roads that I construct. I'm like, okay, I need to kind of finish this up because I'm going to get back on the scenery after a two-year absence of, you know, seeing most pink foam than ground foam. But uh, 
So I decided to grab some black paint, concrete paint from Woodland Scenic, spray paint, and just coloring the roads and smoothing them out with the palm sander and having a vacuum attached to it. Um, that's about the only thing I've been working on. And, and you're using drywall material to make these roads? Yes, I am using drywall material. I just stir it for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. But I have also used a Woodland Scenics. Uh, Scenics Do you uh, get a lot of shrinkage with the drywall material? Do you get cracks in it? Or how I, does that dry? It dries. Yeah, now we're it, talking joint compound, right? Yes, joint compound. Um, it dries in 24 hours. But I do have a 150-watt halogen light bulb that's kind of over half side of my layout, the other half to where I can dry that section up quick, but the other part of it, I gotta wait another two days for it to cure. Did you ever try using up. some of that like uh, quick drying joint compound? I don't think I have, no. Because I, I know they make that, they make that, you know, the stuff that's got like the color change, but uh, just using that for its actual <laughs> intended purposes, I noticed that it has a tendency to crack. Um, I say I know Ken's use that uh, cement patch up, which yeah. works pretty good. Yeah, I just finished that diorama for uh, Jeff Otto at Oak Hill Model Track Supplies, where we I actually built 12 feet of roads on it using that cement. And that's that uh, diorama and that segment's going to run in the October What's Neat show. That but the footage that's of that awesome. came out really good. It was very nice. And the joys of, of our podcast. And Thomas, <laughs> uh, we've been investigating a little bit about the uh, equipment that we want to get for doing the uh, various uh, feeds directly into the computer. So oh, yeah. at some point, we don't have to record on the video chips and we can record the podcast directly into the computer yeah, and so do yeah. the editing that way. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to set that up and that'll lead us to the point where we can do a live podcast. Would you say that's the next step? I think that's the next step, yeah. So, because now we'll get a card that we can put in on Ken's computer here that allow multiple uh, video feeds from all our cameras here, so we can set everything up, and we can get a real live interaction. You know, we can get a nice little thing on Facebook. We can, you know, we can set a computer up here because I'm sure Chris will want to be a part of that. Um, he can have his computer here watching and reading the comments, and we can uh, have a much more direct interaction with uh, everyone out there and. Bring everybody in and bring everybody in the Kent's on a Saturday night and have a good time with us. We'll be able to actually read comments live online and actually answer questions live when we start doing this. So I'm really looking forward to that new interaction that we'll be able to have. We're also investigating getting sponsors for the podcast. We're looking at something uh, where we would do a company mention at the beginning or the end of the show and then discuss any new products that you might have. And we would set up something like that on a monthly basis. So if there's a manufacturer out there be interested in being part of this, that's another thing that we're sort of investigating. Now I know that Tim Reynolds and Jeff Parker are planning on coming by here uh, in a few weeks. And I've got one of the Central Valley single truss bridges here, single main line bridges. And we're planning a photo shoot where we're gonna build, first of all, on the show, show how to build one of these bridges. Oh, that'd be cool. And then we're gonna have three of them set up on a very large body of water diorama and just do the most amazing photograph in HO scale, where you're seeing three spans across a river. And if it's done right outside, I think we should have a pretty dramatic photograph. I, I look forward to that. That'll, 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 be, that'll be a fun build. That'll be a fun project. And I'll probably have to have enlist you and have you come over here to help me do that there during that day because there's <laughs> going to be a lot of work going on with that. Well, let's just make sure I'm not in school at that time. You can't call in sick? Well, I, I mean, I can, but, you know, it's they well, want a well, legitimate train, reason. Train, trains clearly trump school. Right. <laughs> Dirk, right, 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 uh, right, right, I tell you an did. another thing that we got. We've been getting a lot of reader email on the YouTube feedback, and Dirk, you've got a, a comment I think over there that I gave you. And could you elaborate as to what the gentleman said? Give me his name. This, some of the comments are just amazing, and this one is humbling. This one's from Terry Nathan, and it says, uh, "Ken, I am loving this roundabout round table format." Keep bringing in new folks as the rotation really adds a lot. Wonderful mix this week with Thomas representing us computer geeks and Daniel giving the youth perspective and Dave talking about returning to the hobby and of course Mike trying to defend DC operations. Mike. Mike. Can't wait to see Thomas's report on the Digitrex firmware update function. I spent a couple of hours with AJ at the Orlando convention. That's Digitrax. And it is obvious that he is back and committed to make Digitrax the absolute leader in model railroading technology. His excitement about what is their pipeline was infectious. 
and the announcement of their LNWI Wi-Fi server yes. was really exciting. Having a show like the new roundtable format where several people can weigh in on topics like technology or layout design from various perspectives really brings a much needed objectivity to every topic. I have almost quit looking at product reviews because even the trade journals simply talk about how great each new product is. The ability to have multiple individuals making critical evaluations of products, techniques, and technology technologies is a breath of fresh air that really helps give dimension to the subjects being discussed. Keep up the good work and let us know how else we can contribute to your success. The GoFundMe page is a great start. Terry. Terry, what's this Terry's full name? Thank you very much, Terry. Terry Nathan. Terry Nathan, a lot of thought went into that. We very much appreciate the fact that you've noticed the efforts that we are making because just based on your comments, you paid attention to detail. The round table. I open up the uh, September What's Neat this week talking about this round table. So you remember which month that was in? You didn't have to I ask didn't me have about to ask it. you. That. I just edited <laughs> that one two, four days ago and just got the. Di but the fact is, let's talk about this table for a minute. I, I allude to the fact that we got a brand new table. I drove past this table four days. It was sitting out on the curb of one of the neighbor's properties up the street. I mean, it was rained on. And I literally, we took this table and sanded it down to its bare finish and put a brand new finish of stain to match the rest of the shelves down here. So actually, to be honest with you, it's something that we got for free and finished it so that we could use it for the show. And I, it's, it's working beautiful. Black sides, gold trim, it's got a lot of life left in it. But well, that's kind of... You know they say, one man's trash, another man's treasure. I actually knocked on the door and asked if I could have it before I picked <laughs> it up. But uh, thank you, my neighbor, for this beautiful round table that we're using to create the show with. Um, there's more to talk about tonight. How about uh, the Midwest Valley Modelers Club? Oh, Did gosh. How involved you? I could, I could, there goes five minutes because I could start eating up video on that. Um, I had a lot of video <laughs> clips and a lot of still photographs in mind where I could actually talk about the Midwest Valley Modelers layout. Um, but that's going to require a whole bunch of scanning and editing. And I, I would like to actually maybe make a full-length video for my website about the Midwest Family Modelers layout because we've got seven or eight photo albums of material. We've got hours of videotape that would, of that. That would, that would be neat to have all that compiled. As I granted, you know, a little bit of work, but it would be neat to see that end result, you know, have it all compiled up from there and just be able to sit down and just kind of watch it because I think there's, uh, you know, with, with it being non-digital and you know how the fact that everybody's getting into a digital world i think that'd be neat and that would get a lot of eyes just sitting there watching that stuff because pretty much any um you know one of the reasons i started coming over here got involved here is i just started watching the what's neat uh, videos and stuff like that and it's just it's a nice production it's just you can just get lost in that for you know just sit there and just press play and just go and get absorbed in it and you're like wow there's a lot of some, information. There's a, there is a lot of good information there. Brad, and, how, how about how about this uh, Amtrak engine right here? What about it? I'm telling you what, <laughs> I'm not interrupting, but I kind of almost did. But I mean, you, you, you. I want you to say something about the lights. I noticed the strobe lights are pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, in it. so what was neat when it came to me was it's got two strobes on it now, and it comes with two larger strobes, so you can model the pre-80s and post-80s, where the pre-80s ones flash together and the post-80s flash separately and using two functions on your DCC controller you can actually change the flash intermittently or together with the bell or just on all the time which I thought was a really neat feature of it. Another thing we we didn't notice right off the bat but I've got a tunnel on my layout and so when we ran into the tunnel it's actually got step lights up front that are only bright enough to see when it's dark. That's neat. Which it's it's really cool. It's a very it's it's a very nice yeah. subtle effect. Another cool thing is uh, when you put it in reverse the rear light doesn't come on. They've actually got F12 as a hostler light. So you can turn it on by itself when you're running around the yard. Now, the if I can ask a question, be. what exactly is the hostler like? Because I'm not that into Amtrak, but what is exactly was that on the prototype? Well, they just it was your rear headlight. They just called it the hostler light okay. essentially. Um, it would never be on, you know, normally. It'd just come on if you were hostling cars around. Um, so, like, switching in a yard? Essentially, yeah. Okay. Um, but when I actually, I bought this one first, and when it came, the horn was broken. And um, I actually emailed Rapido, and they sent me another one within a week. Oh, my God, really that's cool. great customer yeah, service. It was great. Wow. It was yes, really neat. that's a testimonial right there. 
Good. And, uh, very happy with them. I, I like this one so much I had to buy another one. So Was it an impulse buy? Or oh, just... the whole thing was an impulse buy. I don't model <laughs> Amtrak at all. <laughs> See, no, I, 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 we, we had a joint layout. And his, his is mostly 40, uh, mid, mid, late 40s to early, early 50s. It's been getting more into the transition era um, as we go. <laughs> yeah. And say I moder- modeled uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, mostly in S Conrail around here and then we you know i met him and it's and we've been slowly he's been going up and i've been going back because now i got some uh prr steam i got a whole passenger consist and now he's got his uh, amtrak fleet to run with my uh ale fit right in with my 80s 90s ns stuff and he's been <laughs> kind of moving up and i've been kind of he's pulling me back and maybe we'll meet somewhere in the middle i don't know <laughs> It's funny when you laughed, it reminded me of the fact the last podcast where you laughed at computers. It's like, you know, computers, there's just nothing you can mess up about them. Oh, yeah. I thought that was an amazing and revealing <laughs> comment. And a lot of people on the internet commented about that. That was pretty funny. Um, gosh, what else do we have to talk about tonight? I know I wanted to mention something about taking this podcast live. We talked about that, but what if we wanted to record this in Daniel's basement? We were all sitting around. Would that require us to have the laptop? with the same microphone recording software in it to bring this microphone? Is that well, kind of... We did that live video at my house a couple days ago with nothing yeah. more than just his laptop. Yeah, say, no, you can. You, we can set up a... Say, we can make this mobile. Um, mobile. The, like, we can sit at the bonfire and do this sometime. Oh, yeah. yeah. So and yeah, just yeah, access that, it on your cell phone, no, that Samsung, like fun. Apple, oh, yeah, whatever cell the, phone you Say, got. no, the technology is, is expanded that we have just literally a plethora of options where, where you know where, where pretty much if you can think of it you can do it and basically anything that, that relates to our hobby today anything that you can think of dream of you can pretty much build it all the stuff the everything that's in it's in our industry now has opened up the the options of everything that we can do tremendously yeah. same thing with technology on the pc side we have so many things that we can could but never thought of and do like with uh, we were just talking about that last comment. What was that guy's name? He mentioned something about that LNY Wi-Fi. It's that the fact that technology oh, you can literally system. Yeah. use the uh, take your phone or the Y Throttle app, whatever uh, phone you've got, but download, download it, it and you easily have wireless control. So you don't really have to spend that much on a standard handheld throttle. And then you got to think, oh, I got to get the radio receiver, plug that, it into that's, my lab. That is that's a good idea, especially if you have friends come over for a a, a train night, yeah. kind of like what we're here at Ken's. And I know also know that Digitrax will recently just came out with theirs but MRC also has their own Prodigy yeah, MRC has Wi-Fi which so we, we in my personal MRC. opinion now my house granted is big and when I'm running my lab with my Y throttle because uh, I got the PR3 from Digitrax and the JMRI software my Wi-Fi doesn't like to reach into corners where my layout is tucked in the basement and I lose signal you know and my train would just go berserk and I just get frustrated now. But we now we really this. had that problem. The only problem we have in my house with MRC is if the layout's on, the fan upstairs doesn't work. We but have something. Yeah, say so there's there. You know, go, uh, from our uh, lover, lovely government and FCC regulations. Hold on uh, a minute. Hold on a minute. MRC. Your fan doesn't work upstairs. Yeah, they're on the he, same he, radio frequency. He's got, so he's when got you're a running wireless your, remote, really? Yeah, you can't control. Yeah, the they, fan. They, they, you can't they make operate, that up. That's no, funny. no they, they operate on the can same. He, can uh, I take uh, and run my neighbor's garage door with it? Maybe. I probably could. <laughs> you, you never know. I say they don't. They're, they're, they you know according to all those regulations, they have to accept. You know, they can't shield them. They have to accept all those frequencies and. Just by the off chance that MRC broadcasts on the exact same frequency That's as funny. his wireless fan. Yeah. I love yeah. Digitrax. It works, it works, but his well, mother gets mad when she can't change the fan setting to what you want or turn the line on or so off. So we have to turn the whole layout <laughs> off so she can change <laughs> she the setting can of the change. fan. The September What's Neat This Video, What's Neat This Week video, September What's Neat, what's the name of the show? Anyway, it just came out two days ago, and I want to tell you this video, the September, that's the RPM meet over in Collinsville, which we got to enjoy. But that broke all records so far in the first 24 hours. We had 5,500 oh, yeah, views, and just a couple hours after that, it was past 7,000. So just an amazing amount of people are watching that. Plus, this podcast has got a direct link in Model Road Hobbyist Magazine now. So nice. I have a feeling that folks are going to be able to find this and access it a little bit easier. The GoFundMe account is still doing very well. I haven't checked the balance, but I think we've made about $150 this week. And this is, this is the one thing about it, that this show that we're producing, it belongs to all of us. 
It's our way to promote and keep the hobby healthy through knowledge and education to all, newcomers and experienced modelers alike. And it's our goal just simply to use the GoFundMe account to improve the ability to have the equipment to convey our thoughts and show modeling skills that we do every day, plus new news in the hobby, plus going around and interviewing folks at their layout, and just create a very well-rounded presentation that's enjoyable to watch or listen to every week. And the same goes for the What's Neat show that we produce every month. Oh, yeah. There's a lot that's going into that. The Fine Arts America website, we've sold a few more coffee cups, and I think we sold another picture this week. All of the proceeds from the Fine Arts site are going to go back into the uh, fund for supporting the show. Thomas, you bought a picture off of that. I did. Were you I pleased think, I with... Think, I think I was your fa first sale, if I'm not mistaken. Tell no, me about your quality. What did you get? It's a fantastic. I got a, about a 12 by... I think it's roughly about a 12 by 18 inch, give or take... Uh, that size print. I already had a frame at my house. Um, oddly enough, it was a uh, it was the uh, Amtrak P42 uh, sunrise or sunset shot you did over the river there. And That's what that the well. He did a segment on that bridge to where he Ken took out uh, you live on location before the sun rose. He went through the steps on how you take a photograph. I don't know. Oh, that was crap. exciting. What month was that, Daniel? Uh, oh crap! That was crap. one of Jim Napoli's. He called me um, up and said, "Wow, you really built us up. You built us up." And then you were taking the picture, and then the sun came out, and the water, and the river, and the reflection, and it was like, "Yeah, I know. It was really cool." <laughs> it's not that dramatic when you're out doing it, but to watch it on video and you and drop in some exciting forward, yeah. music and you've got all the camera edits, it's like. It looks neater it than it really it is. It turns into a whole product. It does. It really does. But no, I was I was very pleased uh, with you know I heard I've heard good things about Fine Art America. I know they sell a lot of photos, pictures, and stuff like that. That because I know a lot of, you know big companies and stuff will buy all sorts of elaborate art and hang up in the showrooms and stuff like that. And I know that they use them, but I said I really wasn't too concerned about quality. And I got it. I was very pleased with it. Now we're gonna hang that some up somewhere up where down and yeah, I was gonna say it never made it to your house no well no it, 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 it did and then it went in the frame and then it came back and I'm like well we're gonna hang this up here somewhere I'm like here this is this is kind of for you I'm like you like Amtrak and then all of a sudden here here's some freaking Amtrak yeah. set that showed up uh, I wanna, a couple weeks later I want to say thank you to Frank Angstead at Intermountain for the uh, pepper he asked Dirk to bring me a pepper shaker full of pepper he, he remembers I like pepper on steaks but they've got those brand new tier 4 uh, Jeevos that are coming out and I think Dirk nice. has ordered some of those and so that we're gonna be able to look at those on the show and that's one thing I kind of wanted to talk about, and that is on the mid on the show. What's neat? We don't do product reviews. I want to call it more of a product overview. overview. Right. So basically, I, it's operations and just uh, just to look at it itself. The functionality yes. and what it does. Some of the best, clearest photography of the model. Let it sound the way it's supposed to sound. Not necessarily judge it on its merits. Like one guy on the internet said, uh, I can't remember now, but it was something to the effect of one of the locomotives in N-Scale that we received the other day sat six inches too high on its frame. I don't want to point out negatives. I really want to just show the model for what it is and let the viewer decide for themselves if it fits what it is they like. Does it match their prototype expectations of what, what they, they want? want? Which with computer technology these days, I'll never forget the conversations we had in the 80s. Bob Schleicher and me would be on the phone at Real Model Journal and that's all we talked about was thickness of handrails. And how could we get the handrails thinner and thinner and thinner? And now we've got it. It's, it's right it's there. there. Yeah, Atherton was one of the big ones. I mean, it, they're just so finely detailed, but it's like every time you, I pick up my models, like I got three locomotives from Athens ready to roll, and it's like I always am careful not to try to break those handrails, but again, it just brings out the detail level of the locomotive. I'm looking at all the stuff on the table here, and I think we just went through everything that's on the table. I think we This did. is where I get to look and say, guys, do you want to run some trains tonight? It's Saturday night. We do. Yep. He, he's got, got his full Amtrak set ready to roll. And I can run the Conrail Mixed Freight. I love it. So that so means it's almost that. over. I'm looking at the clock here. I think we've matched our time for what we want. So I'm going to do it one more time. I got Brad George, Thomas Heil. Thomas, Thomas Heil. You got it. You spot on the money. <laughs> Daniel Coombs, Ken Patterson, Dirk, thank you for running the cameras this evening. And guys, just keep asking questions on the YouTube site. We look forward to your questions and comments. Yeah, we'll try to keep questions. the show regular and balanced and keep you updated on everything that we know from week to week on the What's Neat This Week podcast. So thank you very much for watching and please tell a friend about the show.
That'd be kind of a cool little neat there. Pretty neat. Good night, you got here. Very cool name of cyber right there. In fact, it goes on by. We could call it the Arizona Transcon. There you go. We can't call it New Mexico because that's just the wrong locomotives for that. <laughs> I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I